Good evening. Welcome to all those joining us live, as well as those watching the recording after the fact. My name is Eric Gitonga, and I'll be your host tonight. We have our second webinar in the AHS AJHS for Real for Real series. We have Wandia Muya joining us to take us through matters investments. Please take note of any questions you may have during the presentation and type them in the chat box. Um, at the end of the presentation, once one day is done with it, we shall have a session where she will go through the questions and respond to any that will have come up uh, in the course of the, of the presentation. Karibuni sana, I welcome you one day. Please uh, introduce yourself, tell us who you are, what you do, and take us through the presentation. Okay, thank you so much, Eric. Uh, my name is Wandia Moya. And uh, I'm uh, from the class of 1990. It's a pleasure to be here with you uh, tonight. And uh, I wanted to just take you through just a, uh, uh, an introduction to investments. I know uh, most of the people, when they hear of uh, investments or when they talk, they think of the uh, finance, they think of very complicated formulas. But in terms of investments, investment is very, very easy. It's something that everybody should should understand so that uh, we don't we don't have people, you know, being scammed. So uh, I'll just uh, do a brief introduction. So of myself, so I'm the founder and the CEO of Finsmith Investment Limited at Finsmith, Finsmith Insurance Agency. Uh, Finsmith came from, you know, when you, you talk of, uh, uh, Iron Smith, and I'm sure most of you know about Iron Smith, what they do. So in Finsmith, we deal with, with, with the finance and investment. So uh, basically, I have over 20 years uh, in fund uh, management and uh, investment management. So I've been in the industry for a long time. I started working uh, with uh, Stanvik uh, through the fund, fund management uh, arm of the business. Uh, where I was the head of the of, of both the best, uh, business, I was the head of business development for both the retail and also the uh, corporate side of the business. So the corporate was dealing with uh, basically pension management. Uh, we managed over over a hundred, uh, almost two hundred billion in terms of fund under, under management. Uh, so for most of the you know big pension funds, we were the ones who were managing. I have also worked. Uh, I also worked in. Uh, in uh, I, I also worked as a retail head, which means that uh, I was responsible for coming up with the products uh, for the retail, uh, the, the the retail uh, clients, and basically these are what you call the unit trust products. So I was uh, in charge of uh, developing, as well as uh, the distribution of the product and sales. And uh, later on, I worked there for around 15 years, left, uh, joined uh, uh, CIC Asset Management as head of pension and uh, real estate investment trust. So I assisted in coming up with the pension department of the uh, CIC Asset Management. And also I came up with a product paper for the real estate investment trust. But left after one year, I rejoined the bank, Stanwick Bank as the wealth manager in charge of the high net worth clans where I worked for two years. And then um, I left and uh, started uh, this company, which has been in operation for the last uh, 10 years. So it's a pleasure to be here. And I look forward, uh, I hope this would be more interactive, but I'm sure as we go on, you can actually just ask questions uh, through the chat. And then at the end of the, of the presentation, then I'll take up those questions. So basically, that's about Finsmith Investment Limited. So it's uh, it was incorporated in 2013. Uh, we've been uh, uh, we've been there for over 10 years now, actually 11 years. And basically, the services that we offer are one bespoke investment uh, consultancy. So I have uh, both corporate and retail clients that I manage. Uh, Basically, over over. I mean, I mean for the, my portfolio of clients is, is over over hundred clients. So I have uh, mostly they are retail clients, but I also have some corporate clients. Uh, I also offer insurance. So be, because basically, when you talk about wealth management, you are looking from the you know from uh, uh, making when you are making money. So it's a wealth acquisition, all the way to 
uh, to distribution. So when you talk about uh, wealth acquisition, you also have to protect it. And that's why you have the insurance agency, just to make sure that, uh, you know, when you acquire your, your assets and invest, then uh, you also have uh, an arm that is actually protecting your your your, your hard and, and uh, uh, investment. Then uh, we have the pension and retirement planning, which basically is the what I would call the dist distribution part, because this takes care of you when you cannot you cannot work anymore. So that's basically about Finsmith Investment Limited. So I'll just uh, go go straight to the presentation. Yeah. So. What I do is that when I'm presenting, I usually, because uh, I like when it's an interactive, you know, when I can see your faces. But since I can't see your faces, uh, so what I ask uh, clients is what is the understanding of an investment? And uh, I have always, you know, I've gotten some very, you know, various uh, answers when I ask that question. Some of the clients talk about a car being an investment. I don't know what your view is about a car being an investment, but I know for most gentlemen, uh, especially Bushirians driving those high end cars, for them that is, uh, you know, that is an investment. Uh, somebody talks about a house. So a house is also considered depending because uh, we have the rental houses, but uh, again, is a house uh, an investment or is it, is, it a, is, is it a liability? So that is also a question that, uh, we look at when you're talking about it as being an investment or land land is it an investment so it's also something that uh you know a lot of people especially kenyans if i don't have a plot somewhere a plot maguta maguta you know so it's uh i i have not achieved you know so for most kenyans land is actually part of an investment and uh this uh one uh interesting uh you know, uh, a lot of people, when I talked about, uh, you know, invest in, uh, you know, in, um, you know, this regulated investment, you tell me about multi-level marketing. So that's why I have, I have it there. Yeah, but basically, multi-level mar multi marketing is basically a business. So whereby they sell using their networks. So a lot of them felt, you know what, I would rather invest here, you know, than, uh, you know, putting your money in those strange things you are calling the treasury bills and stuff like that. But basically, just uh, to, to, to wind up, I can say that an investment is defined as an asset or item acquired with the goal of generating income or capital appreciation. So anything that uh, you, you, you buy with an intention that is going to, to generate some income stream in, in, in future, then that one we call, we call an, an investment. And basically, if you look at, the, at, a, at a car, a car I don't consider as an investment because I'm told that when you drive it out of the showroom, you've already lost 10% of, of, of the value. So uh, basically, it's a depreci depreciating asset. And because of that, I wouldn't consider that as an investment unless probably you are using the car to, to generate income. You know, like you have the Ubers or you, you, are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are using it as a rental, you know, a rental car and so on. Then because it's generating income for you, then I would consider that as, a, as an investment. A house, a lot of people have looked at it in, from the angle of, um, you know, when you are living in it, is it a, an asset? Is it a, a liability? So you also have to consider that, uh, you know, like a, a house has a capital appreciation at the end. So I would actually consider that as an investment because uh, uh, the value, it's an appreciating asset, basically. And also when you look at land, I would also consider it as an investment. So a business also depends on the valuation because you see like a business, especially when you're starting up, you usually have to put a lot of money in it. So in as much as you're anticipating value, uh, at, the, at the beginning stage, you may look at it as a, as a liability, but as you get value from, you know, like you start earning income, then you can look at it as, a, as, an, as an, an investment. So uh, basically that's uh, what we define the investment as. So um, I'll just go straight into what I call the investment 101, the fundamental of uh, aspect of investment and uh, basically um, there are two fundamental aspects that you look at in, in investments. I know a lot of people look at uh, what you call the returns because a lot of people will ask me 
what uh, if I if I tell you about the money market fund, they'll be talking about uh, you know the 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 which is giving me the highest return. But there's one area that a lot of people don't look at, and that is risk, which is very very critical. And uh, the fundamental aspect of investment is that uh, the higher the return, the higher the risk. So if you don't take anything from this presentation, please take take that as a as a take home that uh, the higher the return, the higher the risk. And that's the fundamental aspect of investment. So it's uh, when you are talking of the major determinants, so it's the return versus the risk. But uh, uh, we'll find that there are also other determinants of investment. And uh, so apart from the return and the risk parameters, so we also have the time frame uh, of investment. So if you are looking at invest, invest, investing short term, because uh, probably you have, uh, you know, like uh, obligations, like uh, obligations just coming up and uh, like school fees, you have to pay your rent and, uh, you know, you need emergency fees, you need your hospital to pay your hospital bills. Then you may have to look at, uh, you know, investing in short term investments uh, less than one year. But if you don't need the money, maybe for for longer, you, you, you know, you, you don't need it maybe in the next two to three years, then you invest in long, longer, longer, longer term uh, long, or longer dated assets that we are going to talk about. And basically, time frame is a very, very uh, big consideration because um, we said that uh, you, you, you are likely investors will ask to be compensated for the longer that you hold their money. So you find that uh, probably a 91 day treasury bill will have, have a higher rate because investors want to be compensated because you are, you are, you are holding their, their money. It, it will have a lower rate than uh, a 364 days uh, treasury bills. We'll talk about treasury bills, but basically uh, the longer the term, the, the, the longer the, the rates that uh, the investors will require. Then we also talk about the liquidity requirements. Uh, liqu liquidity requirements, requirements basically is just about... Uh, um you know like uh, uh the the liquidity like uh, if you need the money immediately or you need it you know over a long time so liquidity means that you can access your investment in a short uh period of time uh for those that you you don't require you know in a in, in a in a in a you know like uh in the next you know, five years, uh, uh, 10 years, then we consider those ones as illiquid, uh, illiquid assets. So your liquidity requirements will also determine what investment that you are going to put your money into. Then, uh, of course, now we are talking about the age. And that's why we have the Gen Zs versus the Magoti Coco Coco Coco. So uh, in terms of the, of the Gen Zs, they have more time to invest. So they can afford to take more risk with their investments. So, but uh, when it, it comes to now the Magoti Koko Koko who are now retiring, so they don't have that much time. So you find that most of them would, would, would uh, put their investment in uh, some risk averse investments. Um, so they look at, uh, you know, like uh, putting their man, money in bonds while the, the, the Gen Z's would put, uh, probably put their investments in uh, asset classes like, uh, like uh, equity or what you call the shares, because those ones have higher risk, but they also have higher returns. And this person has a, a, a long time frame in which to invest. Uh, then uh, we also look at the financial status. I hope our Dangote is actually listening, because uh, for him, it, it really, you know, like for him, he might even decide, you know what, I'm going to go into hedge funds because he has a lot of money to invest. So he may not uh, look at, you know, you guys, you are concerned about the risk. Can I lose my money? You are holding, holding it so tightly. You, you are having sleepless nights. But for him, probably that is just a drop in the ocean. So he can take a lot of risk. So a lot of investors who are, you know, financially stable, we are talking of the James Mwangi of this world. So they can actually afford to take more risks uh, as opposed to somebody who has, uh, you know, a, a retiree who has, you know, just received two million shillings, probably for him, uh, he cannot even start a business. He'd want to invest in something like bonds where he's assured of the principal. And also he doesn't want to, to, have, to take so much risk because it might take, take him to, 
to his, to his maker. So those are some of the considerations. And of course, uh, there's also the tax consideration, which is, which is very, very important. Uh, I hope uh, uh, Sterling is, uh, is uh, listening because uh, he's the tax expert. He tell you that there are some assets which are very, very tax efficient. And uh, probably when you are considering investment, uh, because you don't want your 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 investment to be eaten up by by taxes, then it's one of the assets. There are some assets that you should consider. I give an example of uh, shares. Shares uh, have a withholding tax of five percent. In as much as they are risky, they are also, they are also very tax efficient. So those are some of the things that. Uh, you consider when when you are investing so all that come into play and uh, you don't just invest because you hear something is is good so you have to look at all those when you are you are deciding on investment so uh, now we come to the meat of the presentation so basically yes i can see stallings is there thank you stallings for listening and uh, probably in your next session you take these people through the you know, you know, the tax efficient assets. So, uh, but uh, basically in terms of the, remember you talked about the return and the risk profile and we talked about, we said that uh, those are, that's the fundamental aspects of investing. So um, you can see that uh, the, this, uh, for those who did maths, you have the Y axis and you have the X axis. So the Y axis have the return and the x-axis have the risk. But you also notice that that line does not start at zero. So I would want uh, probably if uh, it, we were interacting, I would want somebody to tell me why it doesn't start at zero. But basically why it doesn't start at zero, it's because we say that this there exists a risk-free asset. And uh, that's why you can see the risk is zero, but there's a bit of return. And uh, that risk, free asset is what we call the 91 day treasury bill. Because uh, we consider that asset as, as risk-free because it has the, you know, it's backed by the government, by the sovereignty of the government. And when, when you invest because of the short term, it's 91 days, we said that uh, the government cannot fail to, to, to repay. So that's why we say for a 91 day treasury bill, that's a risk-free asset. And all assets actually are measured in terms of risk. They are measured from uh, or benchmarked against that risk-free asset, which is the 91-day treasury bill. So uh, from the 91-day treasury bill, then we have the money market instruments. So if somebody is uh, using a lot of English or telling you about money markets, do you need any? Nini? So money market uh, uh, assets is just basically another way of saying uh, any investment which is, is less than one year. So uh, under this, we are going to, in the next slide, I'll, I'll, I'll cover that. But basically, these are now the, you know, the treasury bills. We talk about the treasury bills. We have um, uh, the fixed deposits. We have the, the call deposits. We have the commercial papers. I will talk about all those instruments. So all those ones which are less than one year, those ones are called the money market uh, investments. Then uh, we move to fixed, in fixed income. Fixed income uh, is another term for bonds. So if somebody is telling you about fixed income, please don't panic. That just means uh, bonds. And bonds usually are issued by the government. They're actually borrowing by the government. Or you can have even borrowing from the uh, corporates. And basically, uh, when, when they borrow from you, they, they, they promise to pay you some in interest uh, periodically and then pay the principal after the after certain terms term so if it's a one year bond then they are going to pay after one year if it's a 10 year bond then they are going to pay your principal after the 10 years but basically during that period they'll be paying you interest uh, every six months so that's basically the bond fund then now uh, i can see somebody asking what's the difference between an asset and an investment and uh, probably I can just uh, respond to that. An asset, uh, we say, is uh, it's, uh, any, anything of value. So uh, I can talk about uh, um, something like uh, 
you know, you have, uh, when you talk about, uh, you know, like in the, in finance or in accounts, you have what you call the, 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 the assets. The asset is anything of value. Then you have the liability as opposed to li a liability. A liability is something which is taking, taking away from, uh, from taking away money from you but basically as a, an asset and an investment should be the same so an asset and an investment it goes there's anything of value but a liability is something which takes away money from you but uh there's something we call the net worth so net worth is basically the asset so you look at uh, the valuation of all your assets then uh, if you deduct your liability then you have the net worth and uh, we find that you can have a positive net worth or a negative net worth. But basically, uh, an asset and an investment, because both of, both of them are income, you know, like uh, they give you some income stream and give you some capital appreciation at the end, then we call that an asset. So I hope I haven't uh, uh, I've responded uh, to Wambai Chege. I can see your question. So uh, basically, I can just go through the... I can just continue with the presentation. I'll be looking at uh, the questions. If they need a lot of explanation, then I'll come back to them at the end. Uh, so we also have the fixed income. Uh, we, we have the balance fund. Uh, so I've talked about the fixed income. So the balance fund basically is a mixture. It's a portfolio of different assets. And uh, I've had, uh, I know a lot of people have heard about, about balance, you know, a balance portfolio. It sounds so complicated. But basically, that is a mixture of different assets. So in a balance fund, we, we may have uh, all those assets that you see there. We, have, we may have money market. We may have fixed income or bonds. We may have shares. We may have land. We may have private equity. And you may have alternative assets. And basically, this is supposed to give you diversification and uh, manage the risk. Because what we say is that uh, when you invest in one asset class, you 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 are you are exposed to the risk of that particular asset class so if you are only investing in land land is very liquid so when you need the money then you may not be able to get to get it as fast as you 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 you'd want so what you do is that you now have to think of balancing your portfolio by investing in different asset classes so that they can look uh, you, you know they can give you the liquidity that you require and secondly they are able to 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 manage the risk of the of that portfolio so that's uh why we 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 have like a lot of pension funds are actually invested in a balance fund because it 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 looks at all the the risks and try to average out the the risk of in of, of each asset class then uh, we have the shares or equities uh, again uh, i'll talk about that so those ones you can see in that spectrum, uh, in moving up that line, you're going to say they are more risky than the balance fund. Why? Because shares move up and down, and uh, the in terms of investment time frame, uh, they are they are considered long, you know, medium to long term. So in terms of risk, shares are, 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 are high risk investment. So if anybody is telling you about a uh, I've seen uh, a client of mine, I uh, was telling them uh, today about, uh, you know, they wanted, they had like around uh, $5,000 they wanted to invest. And uh, somebody as Tanchat was convincing them to invest in uh, equity, offshore equity uh, funds. And uh, what I was telling them is that anything with equities is high risk, which means that if you want your money at any one time, you have to look at the underlying prices at that one, at that time. So it's not really, uh, you know, you, you, if you are uh, risk averse, it's not something I would, I would uh, advise you to put your money into. Then uh, you have land of property. Of course, everybody here, I'm sure, all of us here has a, a kaplot maguta maguta somewhere. So uh, land of property, uh, you know, a lot of people say they always, the value always go up. Yes, they are appreciating assets. But... Uh, why we consider them high risk or long term? Long it's, it's because first of all they are long term investments. When you need your money, you may not be able to get it. They are quite quite illiquid, and that's why, in as much as a lot of people are always thinking that they are certain, um, I'm told this. Uh, you know, there are some people here who invested in a certain real estate, you know, business, and uh, 
when they went, they went for their money, they were told, unfortunately, we cannot give you your money back. And for them, uh, at that point in time, I'm sure they were like, you know what? You can never go wrong with real estate. Why are we being told we can't get back our money? Because, uh, you know, people sold that aspect of, you know, for land, it's always the prices always go up. But yes, it, they go up. But what about the liquidity? So that's why we say for, for land and property, and as much as they are good um, good investments, they also have that uh, risk of being uh, illiquid. Then we have the private equity. I talk about that. And finally, we have the alternative assets. So basically, that's how uh, if you are you are investing in anything, then you should you should uh, always remember that line uh, and uh, try to gauge you know the risk of that investment investment versus the return. So I I just uh, talk and I, I know I've talked uh, brief, briefly about it, but uh, uh, the money market investments uh, we say they are short term investments less than one year. They are usually low risk, as you saw in that spectrum, you know, that, that line. And they include the following. They include the treasury bills. So treasury bills, I, I think I've seen a question about treasury bills somewhere. Uh, treasury bills are really risk-free, considering what has recently happened in some countries, e.g. Ethiopia and Ghana, where the government failed to pay treasury bills. Yeah, so we say treasury bills, especially 91-day treasury bills, all around the world, so apart from maybe some of the sub-Saharan countries where the you know the government has failed to pay, uh, so we say the government will always pay. It's always like a you know like a, a given. But uh, we have seen that uh, you know in some circumstances this may not be the case. But uh, for ma for a majority of countries, uh, the government uh, has has that uh, you know that commitment that you know what for treasury bills they always pay. So uh, that's why we use, it, use we use it. We say it's a it's actually a risk free uh, asset, and use, we use that one as a benchmark for all the investments. So um, yeah, I, I I've seen the concern, but basically uh, a treasury bill is considered the the you know a risk free asset. So even even if you go into the finance finance uh, you know finance literature and read. You know they labor it, and you know the 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 the, the treasury bill is always uh, considered the a risk free asset. So um, they are short term lending to the government, and uh, they are principal guaranteed. Uh, treasury bills are usually what we call discounted securities. So the government sells sells at a discount. So for those who have applied, you actually uh, apply through you know the Dow CSD. And uh, you 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 give a rate, and they calculate for you, and they tell you pay, probably for a hundred shillings, pay ninety nine shillings, and then at maturity you get a hundred shillings. That's why we what we mean by discounted. So we have uh, in Kenya we have uh, three three types of treasury bills. We have the ninety one days, currently at around fourteen point seven percent. Then uh, they, they've been giving some very, very high rates, but uh, they've been uh, recently, like the last auction, uh, they came down. So we also have the 182 days, which is basically six months. And then we have the 364 day treasury bill. So we have three papers. So if for those uh, who look at, uh, at uh, the cent central bank, um, you know, the Dow CSD and the central, ba central bank website, then you are going to see those three instruments, which are the 91 day, the 182, and the 364 days. Then uh, we have the core deposits, which are issued by banks. Then we have the term or fixed deposits also, which are issue, issued by the banks. I always tell people the difference uh, with the, you know, for banks. Uh, and, the, you know, for banks, what they do is that uh, they, they have to raise the deposits to be able to lend. So to raise the deposits, they need to compensate the investors. And because uh, banks are also considered low risk, they don't actually pay as much on uh, fixed deposits or core deposits. So you find that uh, because their work is not investing, they are just getting the money to be able to lend. And the way the bank works is that uh, they, they need to make money from what you call the net interest margin. So if they can give you as low a rate, as possible, then uh, for them that's that's good for them. But uh, for 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 instruments like now, what you call the money market funds, 
Uh, these are what we call the regulated pooled funds. So regulated means that they are regulated by the Capital Markets Authority. Pooled means that um, we have many investors who come in and put their money. So one, we put 5,000 shillings. Another one, we put, uh, you know, a million shillings. Another one, we put, uh, you know, 20 million. Another one, depending on, on their strength. And all this is pooled and invested in a pot. So the returns that are the, 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 on the underlying investment, the returns is actually, uh, you know, given to the investors. So they give, uh, they, they get, they get uh, the same rate. So it's not that, uh, you know, like banks, for example, if you put a hundred million, you're going to get a higher rate. But for a, for a money market fund, they give one rate. So if, if you put 5,000, if you put a million, if you put a hundred million, you're going to get one rate because it's actually almost like a cake, you know, the way the, a cake is. So you may get a small piece of the cake, but the ingredients are all the same. So just think of a, of a money market like that slice of the cake. Uh, so they are very short term and we say they are low risk. And uh, why we talk about low risk is because they are not guaranteed like, uh, you know, when you talk of the, of the, of the treasury bill. It's guaranteed by the government. So these ones are not guaranteed. So yes, there ex exists a risk and most of the of, of the risk may also be issuer related. Like I can ask a, a question, uh, for example, why do you have uh, some money market funds offering 18% when you are talking of the treasury bill being at around 14.7%? And a treasury bill is locked for three months. Well, uh, uh, for, the, for a money market fund, it's not locked, which means that it's very, very liquid. So you can see that if uh, an, an investment is giving you 18%, I looked at the rate ranking today and I can see one which is giving 18%, another one is given, giving 17%. So you ask yourself, where are they investing? So don't just go chasing returns. So look at the fundamentals. Where are they, these guys investing? So ask those hard questions. I don't just invest in anything just because it's giving a return. So, um, so they invest uh, mainly in in, in uh, short-term money market instruments. So basically, we are talking of the treasury bills, uh, short-term treasury bonds, and also we are talking of call deposits and we're talking of fixed deposits. Then we have what you call the commercial papers. And I know a lot of people, when it comes to those terms, they are like, oh my God, what is a commercial paper? But basically, this is a short-term lending to corporates. So um, the risk associated with the borrowing corporates. So, so the risk, there's a risk because uh, I can, I can, I, I, I think of, of, of uh, you know, like a co corporate, like a Chase Bank, for example, which, which had issued a, a, for Chase Bank, it was a corporate, a corporate bond. But uh, Nakumat had used to issue commercial papers. So commercial papers was actually borrowing from, uh, you know, from uh, institutions, from uh, high net, net worth clans to finance their operations. So those ones are also considered quite high risk because as you saw you know, for Nakumat, when it went under, it actually went under with people's money because they, they thought it was a big brand, it cannot fail and so on. So that's why we say in as much as uh, commercial papers are short term, they, are, they also carry uh, an element of risk, which is associated with the borrowing corporates. So, may they, so, so they may have the similar characteristics to shares. So, so for money market funds, uh, that's uh, basically what I deal uh, a lot with. So there are short term or uh, short term investments, which is less than one year. Collective investments. So collective investments is the same as pooled funds. So if you see collective investments or uh, unit trust and all that, they are called the pooled funds. Uh, so a money market fund is basically a short-term packing for cash. So you're putting that cash for a short time. And uh, it's regulated by the Capital Markets Authority in Kenya. So I call it a regulated investment. Uh, why I deal with the regulated investment, I, I know you've heard of... Uh, uh, there's uh, a lady, I think she's called uh, Pascalina Peters, or, or, you know, uh, and uh, she scammed uh, people a lot of money, over, over 300 million shillings. And uh, if you are to look at some of these investments, they are not regulated. So uh, people just, you know, do like word of mouth. We've had a lot of scams 
whereby people, uh, you know, they, 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 they lose a lot of money because these assets are not regulated. So being a regulated asset is very, very important because it's there to protect you as an investor. So they are low risk. Uh, so we say that they can be perfectly, you know, uh, uh, they can't have, uh, ex, uh, you know, no risk. So they are low risk. Uh, they are principal protected, which means that uh, you'll get your principal back. So the only thing that uh, may change is the interest rate. But in terms of the of the principal is protected, then the daily accrual of interest and monthly compounding of interest. So um, the interest accrues on a daily basis. And uh, at the end of the month, all the interest, because the, the, the interest may vary during the month. So at the end of the month, all the interest which has accrued over the month is actually uh, uh, com is, is actually credited to your account. And because it's added to your principal, then it compounds on a monthly basis. As opposed to if you put your money in a three, you know, a three month, month fixed deposits, whereby, you know, uh, it, the money will mature after three months, that's when you get your interest. So you get like, uh, it compounds like on a three, every three months. But for a money market, it compounds on, uh, on a monthly basis. So it's easy access to funds. You can easily access funds plus accrued interest. So it's not locked. And uh, it's a great inv investment for parking cash as you await investment into other asset classes. So if you're looking at, uh, for example, you want to buy land and you want to park, park your money somewhere, then this is a very, very good investment to park your money. If you're looking at um, uh, probably you're a real estate company and uh, you want to buy land uh, you know, and properties, then you can put it in the money market fund as you await to invest into the other asset classes. So it's offered by various asset managers with some offering as high as 18%. So I've talked about 18%, which uh, for me um, does not look good because of the risk associated. I don't, If I don't understand the risk associated with it, I wouldn't recommend that my clients invest, invest in that. Um, so that's basically about the money market fund. So we have various. Uh, for me, the ones I usually recommend are from sound investment companies. And most of the companies that I recommend are affiliated to big financial uh, financial services groups. So I would recommend a company like Jubilee. You know, there are also banks like uh, Stanbeek, you know, there are KCB. You know, those are affiliated to big groups. But when it comes to standalone fund managers, then uh, I'm, I'm a bit hesitant because if anything happens, they are taking maybe a bit more risk in as much as they are regulated then it means that the clients are exposed. So that's why for me, I would recommend, I work with all asset man managers, but I, I recommend a few based on my interrogation. And also, uh, you know, interrogation and also understanding of the of the market. So uh, basically that's how the money market fund works. So you can see uh, the various months from January to December, and you're assuming a return of 16%. Of course, the rates have gone, uh, come down uh, from 16. Now, they are like Jubilee is around 15.5% because basically they will come down depending on how the asset classes. You know, I told you they, they invest in treasury bills, they invest in fixed deposits. So they will come down depending on how the market is performing. So you've seen the treasury bills are coming down, which means that even the money market fund rates are likely to come down. But the good thing is that uh, they don't come down drastically. And usually they'll be much higher than what is being offered by banks or pr probably the, 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 you know, the treasury bills. So most of them will have a higher rate because they have a better asset allocation. And also because of the fa fact that uh, they are well, uh, they, they, they are investing, you know, they have that economy of scale because they can call a bank and say, you know what, uh, I'm giving you, you know, two billion shillings. How 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 much? They have that negotiate negoti negotiating power, so they can be able to 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 get a better return than uh, when you do that on an individual basis. So that's why the the returns will be slightly higher than. Uh, I mean, they'll be much higher than even the bank the bank rates. So uh, as at January, you can see that's a million. I'm just assuming it's a million shillings, and basically. 
uh, you can see the interest. So interest uh, will be accrued on a daily basis. So assuming the rate is uh, cons constant and averages around 16%, it is going to differ, obviously. But uh, say on average is 16% for that month. So the interest earned will be around 13,500. Then this 15% uh, withholding tax, which is a final tax. So, uh, so you have, uh, that's 2,000 shillings. So the closing balance will now be a million and 11,000 shillings. So this one would now be, is, is, the, is the capital that we move into, into February. So you'll be earning interest now on 10, on 1 million and 11,000 shillings. So not 1 million. So it's 1 million, 11,000. So if you assume the same rate, so you're going, you know, February is a, it's a shorter month. It's 28 days. That's why you find that the interest has gone down slightly to 12,400 because it accrues per day. So the withholding tax is around 1,800. So you can see that uh, now the closing balance will be 1,022,000. So in March, uh, the same thing happens. So that principle is compounded and then now uh, Forms part, it forms part of your of, of your principal balance at the beginning of the month. So until the end of the month, so it keeps on compounding. And that's why we find that uh, at the end of the of the year, you have the annual effective yield as 17% and not 16%. And that's the power, the power of, uh, of compounding. So you can see you are, you are earning another one extra percent because of that compounding factor. For fixed income or bonds, I had explained earlier, so I'll just briefly talk about uh, through this. So they are medium-term investments. Medium-term investments mean three over three years. So any time, anything, anything medium-term. Uh, of course, we have uh, one-year bonds, which are not issued as as as, as regularly as you uh, know other bonds. Then you have two-year bonds. Then you have three-year three-year bonds, and you have up to thirty-year year bonds. So we say they are medi medium term investments. So if somebody is telling you about a bond fund, uh, uh, then it means that uh, that investment, you should consider an investment frame of around three years. So they are more than one year. They are usually medium risk. And then uh, they have different terms. So you have one year, you have two years, you have three years, you have 30 years. Uh, and they include the following. So you have the treasury bonds which are led into the government for more than one year. So government borrows from the public and pay a fixed amount of interest semi-annually. So I'd explain, to, uh, I'd explain that uh, the government, uh, you know, the, because they need money for their operations, then uh, they, they do an auction. So every Thursday, they do an auction. So you, actually it's Wednesday, so they, 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 they do an auction for, for bonds, then, uh, uh, you know, uh, banks, you know, insurance companies, then retail investors are going to apply. And then uh, by Friday, they give you the results. And then you're supposed to settle the amount by Monday, two o'clock. So basically, that's how bonds work. So uh, we have various bonds. So uh, like uh, I, I know one of my favorite was the 6.5 uh, years, which was done sometimes in August. Was it August? Or... Yeah, I think around August. And uh, it had the best rate at 18.4. It was an infrastructure bond. Infrastructure bond means that uh, the government will be borrowing for a specific purpose, basically for infrastructures. And uh, the good thing about an infrastructure bond is that for now they are tax-free. So which means that uh, you actually get that 18.4% and uh, they will deduct that 15% withholding tax. So... Uh, we also, so those are treasury bonds basically. Then we have the corporate bonds, uh, which are led into corporates for more than one year. So I talked about, uh, you know, Chase Bank, for example, had a corporate bond. Uh, these days, there are not as many. Shelter Freak used to issue. So basically, these are corporates which would actually be, be in the market borrowing. Then uh, even EABL had a bond. So basically, those are. Uh, lending to corporates. Then you have euro bonds, which are denominated denominated in other currency, other than the currency of the issuer. So you find that, uh, like Kenya shilling, uh, like uh, for example, uh, a euro, Kenyan euro bond will be denominated in dollars, and it's uh, it's, it's actually basically a borrowing. Even for 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 investors here in Kenya, you can actually 
be able to buy a euro bond, but it's going to be denominated in another currency other than the currency of the issuer. Then you have the so sovereign bonds which are offered by the go by, by governments. So basically, that's that's a fixed income or bonds. So for those ones, if you hear bonds, uh, they are not very very complicated. It's just that the government is looking for money and want you and want to borrow from you, and they are going to compensate you for that. So the way they do it, they are going to pay you interest uh, regularly. Uh, every six months, and then they are going to pay the principal at the end of, of the maturity period. So is the withholding tax specifically on the gains? Yes, it is. So it's just the, the withholding tax is on the interest, not on the capital. So, so you have the balance funds. I talked about this. So balance funds are medium-term investments. We talk about three years and above, uh, usually medium risk. Uh, usually invest in various asset classes such as money market funds, uh, in, uh, they invest in equities, they invest in fixed income, all those, you know, property and alternative assets. I talked about uh, most of them being pension funds and uh, they provide, the, the why they invest in all those as, asset classes is so that they can be able to diversify the risk. So we have shares. I'm sure a lot of you have invested in shares. And some some of you got got a got a band. Yeah, so shares are long term investments. So a lot of people went into shares, especially you know those years when um, around 2010, 2009, 2010. Everybody was talking about shares because they were making so much money. And uh, you know, for a lot of people, they would actually just uh, give an order, please buy for me shares. The next day, those shares have have moved. You know, like. Even when you talk about the, you know, the Kenjen IPO, you talk about uh, even shares in the market, Kenjen and so on. You'd actually buy at, uh, you know, like two, two, five shillings. The next day is seven shillings or 10 shillings. So you're making returns, you know, over 20%. In over 20%. And uh, basically, a lot of people put their money there and, and got banned because they didn't understand that uh, they are actually long-term investments at their high risk investments. The same way you make money easily, you can lose that money very, very easily. So uh, basically a share represents ownership of a company. So when you're buying into a company like a you know, BAT company, you now become a shareholder. You know, you know murima, <laughs> the Murima guys. So you become a, a, a part of that Murima uh, investor. So you are part of the owners of that company. So returns are usually in dividends and capital gains. So you can you can earn a, a dividend and you can also add a, earn, earn a capital gain. For me, when investing in shares, I always tell people, please know that they are, don't, don't just go there. Unless you are a high risk investor, don't just go there to speculate because you can be able, you, 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 can, you can actually burn your fingers. So uh, you, you can invest, you can do a fundamental analysis of, the, of that investment uh, in, uh, in shares so that you understand, you know, the main drivers. And usually we look at dividends um, as more, you know, they give an ind indication of the performance more than the capital gains. So dividends are not fixed or certain as they depend on the company's performance. As usually the shareholders are, 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 are paid the residual value after what is left after everything has been paid, including the, the, the debt holders. So, so that's why we say for, for shares, they, they are quite, quite uncertain. So you find that one year you'd get a dividend, the next year you'd, you'd get a dividend, or probably you get a very high dividend. Some of these companies like BAT, if you have to look at the dividend yield, it's currently at around 14%, which is very, very good. And, uh, you know, the, some of these industries like, uh, you know, the tobacco industry or the beer, beer industry, you know, some of these, uh, you know, industries that uh, you, you may not go wrong. So those are maybe sound investments uh, and uh, you can actually... You, you can actually make money if you look at, uh, you know, the fundamentals of the industry that you are going into. Then uh, share prices may go up or down depending on various thing, things such as prevailing macroeconomic factors, uh, company performance, etc. 
uh, if you, you are to look at uh, shares, I know for the guys who have invested in shares, there, I'm sure there are some, some here who are listening to me. Uh, there are some who have made money because actually in the last one year, if you are to look at the NSC index, it's done over 20%, around 23, 24%. So uh, some people have made money, but others, depending on your stock peak, uh, may have lost money. So that's why it's always good to fundament, to understand the fundamental of uh, of the of the shares before just uh, investing and doing uh, you know speculating. So land property, uh, I talked about it. Of course, all of us know about land. They are long term investments, usually more than three years. High risk, high risk because mainly of liquidity. I talked about that. I do to have in a balanced portfolio because of price appreciation over time. Uh, performance is affected by, by prevailing macroeconomic factors. So you, you've seen, like, uh, uh, for those who went into property around 2009, you know, there was a time everybody was just talking about land. What were you know, deep, you know, even it was like, a, you know, like a gold rush. Everybody was buying land, Kashamba. But right now, uh, when you try to sell that land, you find that uh, you cannot even get that value or you, or you cannot get a buyer. So there's a risk uh, in terms of even, even uh, some of the land like in Kenya is highly, highly over, overvalued because of the fact that there are also brokers involved. So you find that you bought some land, you thought it was an investment, and then when you come, you, uh, I mean, you go to sell, then you find actually you cannot get a buyer for the price that you're looking for. You actually, if for example, it's an emergency, you even have to sell at a loss. So those are some of the risks which are associated with land or property. Uh, then uh, we have various investment options. So you can do land banking. Land banking is just basically buying uh, land with, a, with no development and just waiting for it to, to, to appreciate. Then uh, you have residential. Uh, like the, your apartments, you know, the, the apartments uh, that are all over, then you have the retail, uh, retail uh, usually like the malls, you have the commercial and you have the mix. So you have all types of properties. Uh, and uh, the way you value properties is usually uh, using the, what you call the rental yield. Rental yield is basically the, the rent, the annual rent that you are getting from that property divided by the value of that property. And you find that uh, in as much as we have hyped so, property so much, in Kenya, the, the, the rental yield is quite low. It's actually between four to 8%. Uh, but we usually buy it because of the significant capital gain, which again, again uh, also a bit, you know, a bit, it, it takes a lot of time before you actually actualize that capital gain. But that's basically why a lot of people invest in land. Uh, I'll talk I'll talk about uh, the cryptos, uh, though I don't have a, a, a very sound understanding. But uh, basically for these uh, cryptos, I'll talk about it in another slide. So allow me to go to the next slide, then I'll cover it there. Uh, I can see SIB with Man Mansa X. Uh, that's another fund that I also can say I've, I've gone through it. Uh, and basically, I didn't understand what the underlying investments are. They talk about they talk about commodities. They talk about uh, you know about uh, you know like gold and stuff like that. I don't know how they value those assets. So basically, for me, anything that I, I don't understand, unless I'm putting a small amount of, of money just uh, you know to speculate, I wouldn't actually put a lot of money in it. If you don't understand it, please. Don't put your money into it. And that's what I tell you, the, the investors. Let somebody, uh, you know, like take you through like a, like a toddler, you know, so that you're able to understand. Like when they talk about commodities, what commodities and how do they value those commodities? So that's why I wouldn't talk so much about SIB, but I understand they have been giving very, very high returns over a, a long time. Uh, for me, I would say they, it means that they, they also have an element of risk. So if Kiki Umana, then uh, we, we will be here waiting. So it's something you can do, but just do it with, a, you know, with some caution. So uh, 
I just go to private equity. So this is actually more risk, more risky than our shares, because basically uh, this is an investment in what we call the unquoted stocks. So they are not uh, offered in the stock market. When you talk about the, the stocks or shares, they are usually traded through the stock, stock exchange. So for private equity, they are not traded in the stock exchange. So it's just um, somebody can come in and decide, you know what, I want to invest in a company because of the fact that uh, um, I see growth prospect in this company. Probably it's a startup or a family business. So somebody decides, you know what, I want to put money into that family business. So these are usually long-term investments. So uh, most of the people who are putting money are investing for uh, basically around seven years. So usually more than three years, but uh, basically around seven years. They are high risk and high return. So it's just like a startup business, the same way you hear about angel funds, you know. It's a it's a it's a high growth area, but you know it can it it can go anyway. So we, that's why we take, we talk of, of it being like a high risk, high return. Uh, so they they are unlisted shares of venture capital. So they require professional adv advice because of the high risk involved. Uh, and usually, most of them we do you know memorandum, uh, you know like a, just a, a prospectus a prospectus just taking you through you know uh before you invest uh so that uh, you you are able to understand the underlying risk of that investment uh the returns can be as high as 30 percent so that is a very very good return so like uh, i've seen a lot of companies now investing in this microfinance uh uh you know like institutions mfis or agribusinesses because the returns can be quite quite high uh the uh, the venture capitalist, capitalists usually look for high growth areas whereby they, they invest capital, then they provide management and exit, exit after a number of years. So you find that uh, a lot of the private equity investments, uh, when the investors have gotten value, they exit. So they can exit through you know, issuing shares uh, in the stock market or they can invest through inviting other shareholders to come in and pick, uh, you know, and invest in that company. So they have a way after 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 seven years uh, when they have invested, they have a way of, of exiting. And uh, for most uh, private equity in, equity investors, they are they they actually look at that risk, but they are looking at uh, getting the return before they 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 turn around the company and exit, and then they sell it. Uh, to 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 other shareholders, uh, who probably with after after that probably the return will not be as high as uh, when the uh, venture capitalists were managing the business. So uh, we can move on to the next slide so that I can talk briefly about uh, the cryptocurrency and the Binance uh, assets. I, I'm not going to go deep into this. Probably we'll need uh, Chris Kamau. Probably you'll need a session to take us through that. But basically, this just uh, uh, to 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 let uh, people know that uh, it's not uh, cryptocurrency is not a bad investment. They are they are called alternative assets. So alternative assets are assets which are not in any other. They are not in your standard standard portfolio. And uh, usually, uh, we say they are for speculative. Most of most most of them are usually speculative, and they are high risk, high returns. Uh, they are long term investments. Uh, I would say they are long term because you know anything which can go up and down means that uh, you know it has a, a you know the the risk is quite quite high. So when you are going into anything like cryptocurrency or you are going into anything like uh, you know like um, hedge funds and so on. Don't just go there for one year or put your school fees or, or your medical me, medical you know fund into some of these investments because you know if anything happens then it means that your money is gone. So they are not there to speculate. And usually most of them are actually for what you call sophisticated investors. So if you are not sophisticated, uh, probably you need uh, somebody sophisticated to take you through. The investments, and that's why uh, I said I, I'll talk about uh, about it uh, just in this introduction because uh, you can see they include 
tangible assets such as pre precious metals uh, like gold. You have art, like uh, Eric's art is part of these alternative assets. Um, uh, then you have stamps. There are people who, who collect stamps. You have wine collections. Some people even collect guns. I understand even some people like um, collects, you know, um, you know, like uh, like uh, even even uh, 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 you know, like attires from uh, famous people like Michael Jackson and so on. So those are now what you call the alternative assets. They have value, but they cannot be valued like um, in a in a you know like 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 a, in a in an independent market. It depends on the owner or the person who is who is uh, who 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 is issuing. Uh, I, I understand like uh, some of the of the like cryptocurrencies they have a, a, a valuation mechanism, but again these are not traded regularly by just any other investor. So. Uh, so they include uh, even commodities, commodities, you know, like uh, we have, uh, you know, like corn or maize, you know, uh, all those ones are part of the, you know, alternative assets. So uh, they also include financial assets such as financial derivatives. You have hedge funds. Hedge funds are basically uh, done by, you know, the billionaires. The billionaires will want to go into, you know, aggressive, uh, port to invest in aggressive portfolios, probably giving giving. 50% or 100% return. So because they have the, the, you know, the funds, then they can pull, they, they actually pull, and then they invest in in, 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 a, in a, what you call a hedge fund. Then you have the cryptocurrencies, which are also digital currencies. Those are digital currencies, which are tradable. We have infrastructure funds and distressed securities. So they are, they are, they are professionals who just deal with distressed securities. Because they get the, the, the distressed security, then they turn it up, turn it around, and then they sell it. So those are basically your alternative assets, and that's where you get a lot of values. Because uh, because uh, of the fact that uh, you know that value is not just something that everybody understands, but once you understand, you can actually be able to make uh, a lot of you know. Uh, you know, like uh, they, they give you very high return, but you also have to consider the risk associated with that. So they are for sophisticated investors, hence require professional advice. So basically we come to the end of the, of the, of the presentation. So in conclusion, I'll say that uh, investment decision is usually determined by various factors but mainly is the risk and return. So always remember that. So when you are asking me about returns, also understand about the risks. So once you understand that, then uh, I think you're not going to be confused uh, and be among the hundreds of thousands uh, of people who, who just chase returns and just get scammed. So the fundamental investment rule is that risk and returns are directly correlated and one way of managing risks is, is diversification of your investment portfolio. So to diversify your investment portfolio, ensure you invest in different asset classes and across different industries or geographical areas. So that's why for your investment um, portfolio, you may want just, uh, you know, you may have Kenya shillings, you know, you may want to consider having a bit of uh, dollars. You may also consider, you know, having a bit of land. So don't put everything in land, have some bit in, uh, in other asset classes like the money market or bonds. So that you are, if, in, if one of the industry is not performing, then uh, at least you, 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 you don't lose, lose, lose all your, your savings. And finally, I would say that uh, this is what I do, I do on a daily basis. I help people uh, have their money work for them uh, through Finsmith. Finsmith is basically the company that I've uh, uh, done the introduction. So if you want to have your money work for you, uh, please talk to me. So thank you so much. So I'm available. You can always get me on uh, For Real For Real. And uh, uh, it was a pleasure having you here with me. Thank you and good night. Thank you very much, Wandia. Um, before we close, there are some questions that have been asked uh, from the audience. So we'll yes. probably go through them. Um, the ones that you've already answered, I will not ask, but the ones that yes. haven't been, maybe we can touch on them. So Tabitha asks, hi, Wandia. So is it only appreciating assets that are real investments? 
Yes, actually, yeah, investment is appreci not, not really appreciating. We said it's anything which is giving you uh, income, regular income, or just income, anything that you buy with a view of getting income from it, or appreciate in value. So it can be either it's giving you some income, or it's, 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 uh, it's appreciated, so that's an investment. Uh, I know what this may be leading to because uh, sometimes we take loans uh, to buy to buy assets. So at that point in time, it may be, it may look like a liability because you have a you have a loan against it and it is negative net worth. But if you are looking at it, you are investing in it so that it can give you value at the at the end of the investment, or it's going to give you like a a stream of income. That's that's an investment. If it's not, it's going to take away, like uh, there's some investments we put the money into just for, you know, like this emotional, you know, like uh, just because it, or say some, everybody is doing it or because uh, I had, I've had i given an example of like a lot of people investing, uh, that's probably one cow. So you have one cow, uh, you're just delivering milk and it's just keeping you busy. But when you actually look at the underlying in terms of the income that you're getting into it, you're actually spending more than what it's giving you. So that's not an investment. So an investment should give you value. If it's not, then that's a liability. So I hope I've answered uh, uh, Tab's, Tab's question. So, so thank you. Um, the next question we have from Esther, kindly cover a little about the famous education insurance project, which products which are marketed as investments. So if you can give a brief comment on that. Uh, okay. Uh, basically, uh, just uh, to touch on insurance. For insurance, I always tell people, please, insurance is not investment. Because insurance is basically you are buying an insurance for protection. And if you are to look at... Uh, um, uh, the 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 you know like uh, the scholar or the the education policies, the protection is that uh, if anything happens to you, then uh, the insurance com company will come in and make sure that they pay for their children's education. So that's the protection that you are you you, you are looking at. So don't put your money into an insurance product because you expect a return. I tell you for for sure that. Uh, uh, especially for life insurance, uh, part of the cost, like uh, 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 any, any time that you take a policy, like 40% of that, whatever money you put in, is used to pay the, the agent. So you can imagine by the time you recover that value of that, uh, you know, whatever money you put in. So this, the, it's, it may be very expensive at the beginning, but what you're buying is actually the protection. So don't buy in, uh, insurance for investment. So I hope I've, uh, I've answered that question. Okay, thank you. Um, the next question we have is from Justina. If you can touch a bit on unemployment insurance income protection as well, comment on that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, em employment, uh, uh, you know, like what you call the retrenchment covers, those are very, very good uh, because uh, at the end of the day, you are looking at if anything happens to you when you're in employment, then you have a cover that takes care of, of the, you know, they pay you something uh, once you are retrenched. So, you know, like when you're in, in employment, probably you have loans, you have, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, you know, like uh, liabilities. So it's, it's always important. Actually, even uh, you find that even your employer will, will take a cover for you. So that if you are retrenched, then uh, you are able to, you know, to 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 you have at least a uh, you know a bit of time before you find uh, you find your next job. So they they make sure that uh, they pay they pay that money. So so for me, I would say uh, employment insurance is very very critical and it's very very important. I, I, it, it's it's a uh, it's a uh, for for guys who are working, it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a uh, it's a good product for you to have. I'll go to the next question, uh, which is from Wambaire. If you can please talk about trust funds. Oh, trust funds. Uh, yes, so trust, trust funds, funds uh, trust funds, uh, I would say that uh, uh, trust funds, uh, you know, when you talk about, uh, about, uh, you know, wealth management, we talk about, uh, 
first of all, there's the acquisition bit when you are, you know, like uh, asset acquisition. So when you're working and acquiring assets, then there's a protection bit, and then you have the distribution bit. So a lot of people will work very, very hard throughout their life, but they don't think about the distribution bit. And that's why you find that a lot of people actually lose lose a lot of wealth. When something happens, probably they, they get uh, incapacitated or they die or they get old. So that's why it's important for you now to create a trust. And basically the trusts are done by, there are some trust companies which do, do, do trusts. Uh, and uh, trusts are basically a way of protecting your legacy wealth. So you, 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 you set up a trust. Uh, there are various trusts that uh, you can be able to set up. And then you put your, all, all your wealth uh, into that trust. And then you have rules uh, uh, as to how the, the wealth will be distributed if, in case anything happens. So uh, that's also part of the, of the wealth management. I don't do that bit. But uh, there are professionals who do that. There are lawyers who do that. And also there are trust companies that, uh, that uh, offer that service. And it's a very, very important uh, service uh, for, for, for you when you're not there to, to take care of your you know, dependents. I'll go to the final question that wasn't touched on. Uh, this is from Claire. So we have many investment companies out there. What mm -hmm. are the red flags to look for? I would say uh, one of them um, would be like for me, I look at the financial capacity, like uh, the, the financial capacity of the company. So most of them, like the ones who have been there, if you look at the, fund, the funds they are managing, most of them overall are managing very, very big, big funds, like over, you know, like in terms of financial, financial strength, they are managing over a hundred billion. So I would say for, for, for a company, look at the financial strength, look at, look at the, uh, owners of the company. So if you're not sure of the owners, then don't invest. Uh, look at the, you know, like uh, corporate governance around that company. So uh, most of them, like uh, I'll give like uh, for, for investment companies, uh, they, there's a, a corporate, governance trust, corporate governance structure, especially for the unit trust companies, whereby they are supposed to have like a, uh, they're supposed to be to have a custodian bank. They're supposed to have a trustee. They are su supposed to have, uh, you know, the, an administrator. So if and, and also the auditors. So if you look at all those uh, those parties and you're not comfortable, then don't 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 invest in that company. So I would also look at, uh, you know, the reputation. So reputation, we say, is the you know the the word around. You'll hear people talking about a company because. Uh, in as much as uh, you, you may have a, a company which is financially sound, uh, when it comes to the way they treat, treat their customers, but probably they are not customer centric or they don't have, uh, you know, good processes in place, you know, there are delays in terms of investment, then that is bad reputation. And uh, it's, it's, it's uh, for, for you when you're investing also, uh, you have to think about that as well. So those are just uh, but a few. But in terms of the analysis, uh, we do like a comprehensive because uh, you also have to look at the risk, you know, the risk factors. What are the risk uh, systems which are there in that company? Risk management, are they robust? Uh, is the company regional? Because uh, if it's just a local company, then, you know, uh, and a standalone company, then uh, you, 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 you may, you may, you may want to question, you know, what what risk processes have you put in place to make sure that uh, the 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 investors are protected. So, so those are some of the things that uh, I would look into. So, uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Um, any, any other questions from the audience before we close? Um, since I don't see anything coming in, well, uh, one day you have shared how people can reach you. Maybe you can uh, respond, or you can just share with people how they can get to you in case they have any questions for follow up that they may need to contact you. Okay. Uh, in case you want to contact me, my number is 0722 uh, So you can WhatsApp, you can, you can write to me on uh, email, muya, M U Y A dot an. Uh, at at uh, gmail.com. So and I have with a, an e without an e. 
with uh, Muya and Anne with a knee. Okay. Yeah. So you can contact me. I, I know I'm usually online because uh, my business is usually mostly online. So if you have any, I, I, I have some clients among among you. So uh, they they know I'm very, very, in, when it comes to servicing my clients, I'm very, very passionate. So if you have any question or you need any assistance, please, please feel free to, 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 to get, uh, uh, to contact me. Uh, I offer the services as, um, like uh, I have a free, like for, you know, small amounts I, I give, I offer free services, but uh, if you want uh, for me to structure a portfolio, then uh, I charge a fee for that. Uh, or uh, even for financial literacy, if you just need me to, you know, to take you through how to, you know, cause uh, what I do is I, I try to design investments for, for clients. So I look at their specific circumstances and then I'm able to, to, to offer, you know, that advisory services in terms of structuring, uh, how you can be able to invest your portfolio. So uh, I do all that. So if you need any of those services, please feel free to contact me. Thank you very much. Asante Sana Wandia, we truly appreciate Asante. and the audience Asante. is also registering their appreciation for what you've taken us through. Okay. Um, so I'd, I'd like to thank you all for joining us for this insightful session. Our next webinar shall be in November. The date specific shall be shared with you in good time. We shall have Bright Shitemi taking us through matters mental health. We realize that there's a lot of importance in that and especially in our For Real For Real asylum. People have mentioned that a number of times. So this would be a good time to just listen in on what involves mental, matters mental health and how we can uh, help each other have a better health in terms of our mental makeup. Um, lined up in 2025, we have sessions on lifestyle diseases, in agriculture, on financial management, on Kikau. Um, and for all these, we are very excited to have people come in and talk to us about what they have on offer. My only ask is that may we have more ladies joining us. So far, Wandia is the only lady that has been scheduled for a webinar, and we want to have more of you Croatians come and join us. Uh, even though we have this uh, topic set up, me as dictator, if you as a lady come and you want to have a topic to talk about, I will slot you in before the other guys. So please come forth and let's do that. Uh, in the meantime, I wish you all a wonderful night until the next time in November. Cheers. Have a good night. And that's all from us. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye-bye. Good night.